recent methanol production from reformate covered copper specific cathodes using Bologna transmission of FTIR. <coughs> Please. Yes, testing. Yeah. Right, sounds all right. Thank you for the introduction. Um, and uh, thank you for the organizers for inviting me to give this talk here. What I'm going to talk about today is an old chestnut in the uh, methanol synthesis on copper that I come to later, right? So I don't have a long track record in this field. But what happened is that I, I dropped by a PL one time and ran into all these wonderful people here. and given my background in using isotopes and isotope transients, and they just put together a new isotope transient operando rig at, uh, at IMSL, then I was invited to come and play with it. So this was great fun. So uh, I'd like, in addition to the co-authors on this, to actually give extra uh, acknowledgments to uh, Jan for doing a couple of work. He's in the audience here, and he doesn't throw anything in his uh, new mind. Uh, discussions with other PNL uh, Employees such as Jim Buck and Mark Engelhardt at XPS on Catalyst and Don Hathaway as a DFT. But I have to thank uh, Mike Costumes uh, for Mike White for inviting me to come and play around. We do miss it. And it's been a wonderful time. Okay, so here's the machine. I won't talk too much about it. I came after it was built. Uh, but it is a, an FDIR in this, you know, simultaneous mass spec and FDIR so-called operando machine with a um, 5 or 10 percent, a few percent of the catalyst held in the flow path in the IR transmission window and the rest of it out of sight uh, to give you uh, conversions that you can measure with the mass spec. The uh, gas response time is approximately a second in there and FDIR, you have a nice uh, band to look at. You can also get spectrum on that sort of time scale, a couple of seconds, right, or less. All right, so I won't spend much time there, but here's the old chestnut, right? We've heard some beautiful talks already at this meeting about the role of formate on copper in uh, a couple of reactions, these two reactions. One is uh, in, in this particular case, we're uh, feeding CO2 and hydrogen, uh, partly because uh, it's known that CO2 makes, uh, oops, CO2 and hydrogen uh, make formate readily on copper. Uh, the formate is uh, still questionably taken the mechanistic line to make methanol, but also reverse water gas ship, and we've heard about the water gas ship mechanism already today, uh, has been pretty well, the formate's been shoved off of that stage pretty far the time, so we don't believe that formate has anything to do with water gas ship. But the question remains whether it's got a role in methanol synthesis, of course it's sitting there at the bottom of the surface. As it does for water gas ship. It's, uh, if you look in IR, it's the most prominent surface species in the reaction, and some of the coverages you saw yesterday in the plenary used to find that. And, um, and I've said the rest of that. So here's some background um, that sort of sets up the problem. Most people, uh, <clears throat> the, the proof that formate makes methanol is usually has been attempted by uh, titration experiments where you form, put formate layer on single crystals or on supporting catalysts, then titrate it away in either high containing atmospheres or other atmospheres and uh, see what happens. I just have a, a picked on it. <laughs> this paper, I'm very sorry, uh, that this is a formate layer on this copper 100, uh, and it actually forms the high pressure hydrogen. Uh, you can see that the formate uh, decomposes. This measured by XPF. Uh, but there's been work on supporting catalysts also, and some of the some of the researchers see an effect of hydrogen on the decay rate of formate, as some don't. On, and uh, for example, Matt Murra saw no hydrogen effect on one one oh and no hydrogen effect on one on one and one zero zero. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, but none none of these people <coughs> hydrogenation of the formate to make methanol, but we don't have any proof. So this, we're going to use this machine to do that sort of thing. But first, just to show in our hands, uh, here's the infrared <coughs> of steady state catalyst surface at, at quite a low temperature. And we use this low temperature because it keeps the formate, the formate, well, I can actually go out of order here. Here's the formate intensity as a function of temperature 
with this particular feed gas of three to one hydrogen CO2 at, uh, at six bar total pressure. And here's the, here's the spectrum in the scale below the region of the formate. Um, and there's these lovely uh, uh, symmetric stretch features which move as they should when you put either H, on, H or D on the carbon or you use carbon 13. So this is just used for the oscillatory transients that, that Yon showed you on Tuesday. So there they are, and here's how much, how many of them you have. We picked the temperature so that we were far from it, would be far from equilibrium, but had measurable ethanol synthesis rates at the same time should measure the, uh, conveniently the, the, the destruction or replacement of the form made on the surface. Okay. So this is the relatively low temperature. And Yang showed you the isotope transient. Uh, I'll include this again because it has this important, this could have been a knockout. Here's the isotope switch from C13 CO2 to C12, and the individual points here are the IR on the formate on the surface, switching as isotopomer, and then the, the, the mass spec lines show it takes longer for that switch to show up in the mass on the methanol uh, product. Had that been shorter than the, uh, the formate on the surface, that would not form the Intermediate changes and the uh, output changes before the intermediate changes. It doesn't work that way. So this is a so that formate is still in contention. So what uh, and here at those conditions are the sort of coverages and rates that we're talking about. So you see that there's a lot of formate uh, and, it, and the leak rates both forward and back are quite slow. So that the change up time is in the thousand seconds, thousand seconds range under these conditions. Um, but as you see, we, as the answer on um, Tuesday, the major exchange mechanism that we think goes on is the, is the dissociation back CO, CO2 hydrogen. The question is, can we see these parasitic channels in these experiments? Okay, so here are the titration experiments in a simple, simple-minded drawing. Do set up a steady state catalytic surface, uh, add a layer where you're in the first one you actually in methanol synthesis, and then switch into do a chemical transient where you switch into, uh, switch into hydrogen. And when I write H, it can be D as well. In fact, we use D mostly because of the mass spec. Uh, the mass spec chronometry is much better that way. And when we can get away with it. So, well, that's what we've done. So, again, this, uh, I'll help you over there. Tuesday, I saw this paper. Here's our view. Here's uh, the transient switching directly into the either deuterium or argon and it's color coded. And so that at the time of the switch between the steady state catalytic feed and, and this titration gas, <coughs> the methanol drops drastically um, and, and very quickly, whereas the formate sort of takes you know, several thousand seconds to be pulse. And again, the major channel is decomposition back to the of the CO2. In deuterium, there is some extra signal you watch monitoring uh, 34, which is the major peak of the fully deuterated uh, uh, And so it's nowhere, it does not maintain anything close. You have a sort of hydrogen, you have full surface added layer of formate, and you don't have that. I mean, that's the main point here. So these hydrogen, on, these, on this catalyst, we don't see methanol in dry hydrogen. However, we, um, oh, there were some other things to point out here. We also noticed that the, the, the decay time for the formate in the dry hydrogen was quite a bit slower than, than it was in the SIP experiment. So there's something about the, the steady state reaction conditions that made the formate more replaceable or decomposable or reactive. And so what's in this steady state catalytic system that's not in a dry hydrogen well water? And the standard stumping question at seminar at conferences like this is, uh, have you ever studied the effect of water on the reaction? Nobody wants to mess with it. Um, but we did. So here's the experiment, the same experiment, but the mass spec traces. Again, the, the, uh, the dark blue is in argon, the, the magenta, I guess, is in, is in dry deuterium. And if we add a little bit of water, we can't read that here, but this is equivalent. This is Seven nanomoles <coughs> of, uh, per second of water, and we're feeding 7,500 nanomoles of CO2. Right. Okay. So this is uh, 
uh, the same moisture content as the reversible RDS ship plus methanols for using the steady state. So this is roughly the water partial pressure under the catalytics. And, and bingo, you know, methanol comes off and goes, goes down. And in fact, at this point, we're slightly higher methanol production rate than we were in steady state. So water is releasing <coughs> methanol and this is what, what's going on. Um, here's a, another fairly complicated set of slides. After a while, uh, we've done these experiments with uh, sort of cleansing uh, isotope, uh, uh, transient phases in here, adding argon or in the interior, dry interior, to kind of clean everything out and then switch the water on into that, either the, into the dry hydrogen. And as you, as you put that in, it, it, it also makes the methanol uh, after such a delay. If you remember the formate is still being published very slowly through this time period. In fact, we're down to down about 60% in surface coverage by the time this pulse is switched in. Um, and you can see there's a partial pressure dependence. Again, I've got it, it's in terms of the uh, water flow rate, but this is about um, 0.1% and this is, uh, and then these are scales. So there is a partial pressure effect the amount of methanol you make. Um, Anything else that I missed on this slide? No. Okay. I want to point out that there is one. If you switch into argon and just the same for water without the hydrogen, you don't see much methanol either. You see a little bit. So if you need water and methanol, see this. So this is looking pretty good. Um, what happens what happens to the form while you when you introduce the water? Here's the formate level, you switch into this cleansing argon pulse that decays at this rate. And the, I'm sorry for the, for the choice of symbol, but this, this upper curve is, if you leave it alone, you keep it in, the, or put it into dry deuterium, and we know that there's, very, there's no difference there. Uh, there's no change to the decay rate, but if you switch in three nanomoles per second of water, seven and a half and 15, you see that the, 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 the formate is caused to decrease more rapidly than it did before you put the water in. So this curve looks like, you know, you can talk at a certain time uh, when the methanol is finished coming out, you can say, well, here's a change in the, the extra of formate decomposition that is caused by water, and, and compare that to the extra, to the methanol that was made during this pulse, and that's shown in the next slide. And so stoichiometrically, it's reasonable, right? Here's the amount of formate that was moved in nanomol uh, and as a result of the differential or the amount of formate that was lost as a result of the water pulse. And here's the, the, the methanol made during that pulse. And, you know, the, so the, the, select, the, the yield is, uh, is, is reasonable. It's not more than that, not less than that. It's consistent with the formate being the source of this, uh, this methanol, right? So it's tempting at this point, I'm running a little fast because I'm nervous, uh, it's tempting at this point to break out the champagne and say we've got something to review. We've got formate and if you've got that hydrogen around, suddenly you can make methanol. And so now your brain starts going on intermediates, hydrogen shuttling agents, all sorts of things. And, uh, and that may be happening, however, live long enough to be really skeptical on these things, and we're dealing with animals, right? So let's, uh, before we do that, let me give you a few, a uh, few, a few cautionary. Come on. Great as a double edge. This is, oh, this. <laughs> so the methanol yields are small, right? They could arise from invisible populations of other species other than the form. And that the well, okay, but we argued that and said, well, but the formate's affected, you know, by the same token. You know, you see the loss of formate eating into the methanol you make. However, right, um, the B2 are the, are the water without the hydrogen causes a similar change in the formate decay rate, but there's no methanol made. All right, so they get a little worried that, uh, that maybe these two effects are independent, which is, uh, you know, again, Hawkins Rader says there's one explanation for both, but maybe they're independent after all, and it just is Murphy's razor. So, <laughs> and furthermore, 
time that really got us worried um, is that uh, we did isotopic trans, uh, we did isotopic variants where the water had a different uh, isotope than the formate that was made in the tablet condition. So here's one. Oops. Uh, my phone is too clumsy. All right. The, um, refer to the hydrogen version formate and then switch into a titration gas D2 and D2O. Right? With or without that cleansing period in D2, we find that there's way too much H in the methanol. <coughs> so that's where we really put the cork back in the champagne. So it's like, um, there's some extra hydrogen we can't account for, right? And, and you, can, you can postulate as well as I can what the source of that is. It could be a minority pool of that sort of H. Right? It could be some minor methoxy that we cannot see that's also the intensity of something, right? And right now, um, we really don't know. And that's what I'm here to tell you. But it's still alive. It, but what's true is that the simple hydrogenation of the formate as a majority of hydrogen H absorbed on copper is not responsible for making the methanol. And that, uh, that the water system methanol formation in these experiments uh, undoubtedly involves some minor species that we can't measure, and they could even be on the support. And so we're trying to do this one. It's hard to get eye on it to announce it for the but that's what we're trying to do now. So with that, I'm actually doing my time on the show. And uh, thank you for, for this talk. Thank you again for an interesting presentation. Thank you.